Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. This week is called Holy Week on the church calendar. It's the traditional week for the celebration of Passover in the Jewish calendar and the week of the triumphal entry, the passion of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. If at no other time of the year, this week each year should move your heart in response to the love and mercy offered to us through Jesus. Now we all know John 3.16. The contemporary English version of that verse reads this way. God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. That is what this week is all about. When it says God gave his son, it was not at his birth. When God gave his son, it's not talking about Jesus' teaching. When God gave his son, it was not in his miracles that he performed. When God gave his son, it was in his sacrifice. God gave Jesus as the sacrifice for us. By his sacrifice, we have eternal life. By his sacrifice, we become a part of the family of God. By his sacrifice, we become the church, the bride of Christ. That is the meaning of this week and the reason it should move us to gratitude and to praise. Speaking of the church, there is something that interesting something interesting that happens during Holy Week in the Bible. It's recorded briefly in Matthew and in a bit more detail in the book of Mark. Jesus has an encounter with a fig tree. Now, this is a miracle story, but it's a miracle story with a kind of a twist of a meaning. So, in this sense, it's almost like one of Jesus' parables. Turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 11. That's kind of the nice thing about this format using video. Nobody notices if you have to get up and go get your Bible. So if you need to, pause. Okay, you got it? Look down at verse 12, Mark chapter 11 and verse 12. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Now look down to verse 20. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Now, I think it originally the idea was from the roots, but anyway, withered away. And Peter remembered and said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. In verse 22, and Jesus answered them, have faith in God. The event that we just read is said to have occurred the following day, which is probably Monday, could have been Tuesday, some might argue, but doesn't really matter. Jesus and his disciples had gone back to Bethany to spend the night, and now they're headed into Jerusalem. As they're walking, we're told Jesus is hungry. <laughs> that makes me happy. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was a typical guy in that regard. When my wife asks me if I'm hungry, I usually answer with, Hi, my name's Ernie. Guys get hungry. Jesus was a guy. I say amen to that. Up ahead, along the road, and this is kind of a guess on my part, but very likely near the garden, <clears throat> excuse me, near the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus spots a fig tree. The fig tree is in full leaf. By all appearances, a healthy tree, at least from a distance. So Jesus goes to have a closer look. The end of verse 13 says there were no figs because it was not fig season. Did Jesus forget 
when figs came into season? Probably not. Did Jesus assume that there would be figs left over from the previous season? Highly doubtful. Jesus looks at the tree and in a matter-of-fact way says, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And the disciples hear this comment and they all go on their way into the city. The next morning, as they walk by, the disciples notice the tree is withered from the roots up. The whole tree is dead, dead, dead. Peter, as usual, speaks for the group. Look, the tree is dead. Jesus' response is, have faith in God. Have you figured it out yet? This isn't about figs at all, is it? The fig tree is a symbol. In the Old Testament, the fig tree is associated with Israel. Israel was to be a gift from God to the world, like right figs on that tree would have been to somebody who passed by. Israel was to bear fruit for God. But Israel had become an unproductive tree. By cursing the tree, Jesus is making a statement about Israel as God's people. They will never be the source of good fruit again. Now, if the disciples understood the symbolism of the fig tree and its relationship to the nation of Israel, that might explain their shock at the tree's sudden death. They might have been asking, does this mean Israel is finished? Well, the answer to that question comes on Sunday morning, and it's completely explained 40 days later. On Sunday, Jesus is resurrected from the dead, and a new era of salvation and grace becomes a really reality. A new covenant with the world based on Jesus' sacrificial love is instituted. And in a real sense, the, a new tree blooms. And on the day of Pentecost, that tree begins to bear fruit. The church is the new tree. The church is to be God's blessing for the world. So where do we fit into this story? For the past 36 days, we've been going through the little book, Praying with Jesus, 40 Days. Got mine right here somewhere on my desk. There. The purpose of the devotionals has been to remind us that we are His church, that we have a responsibility to depend upon Him, that we are to bear fruit for Him. We do not want to become an unfruitful tree. We don't want to be replaced. We want to be, we do want to be pruned by God's Word. We want to be watered by God's Holy Spirit. We want the Son of God to shine upon us. Now this week as we finish up our devotional reading, be in prayer for the church, our church, New Bethel Baptist Church. Be in prayer for your role in the church. Are you helping the church bear fruit? Each one of us has a role, a part to play. Who knows? Maybe this time of sheltering at home is a part of God's pruning process to make us more fruitful and productive for His kingdom. I mailed out a prayer list this afternoon. Let that prayer list guide your prayers tonight and this week. Please be in prayer. Please be in prayer for our Easter service. No, we will not be at the park for Easter on the Bay like we had planned, but I believe God can use this service this week and this season to bless people who might not otherwise come to church. And one last thing before we pray. Would you please invite your friends and family to come to church online with us this Sunday? I've got my prayer list. I printed mine off. I hope you can get to yours and that you'll look through that and use that as a guide for prayer this week. Let's pray together. 
Father, thank you for your word and the illustration that we find there for in the middle of all of the craziness that was going on in Jerusalem at that time, Jesus thought enough of his disciples and ahead enough of us to help us know that he wants us to bear fruit for him, for his kingdom. And Lord, we want to do that. As a church and as individuals, we want to bear fruit for your kingdom. We want to be uh, just an orchard full of ripe fruit that the people in the community and even around the world now with this online thing can come to to find nourishment from your word and encouragement from your people. Lord, we want to be a place of fruit for you. Please help us to do that. And Lord, if there's anything stopping us as a church from being that, help us to, to find that. And with your grace and help, help us to prune that off. And Lord, allow us to be rich and full of your fruit for your kingdom's sake. Father, we pray for these other spiritual prayer requests. We pray especially for the Ellis family in the death of Vernon this week. And Lord, we know he's a statistic now of this coronavirus and we're holding off everything we're doing uh, in an effort to, to make that as safe as possible for our friends and family and neighbors. And Father, we pray that that would be effective. We ask that you would bless our state, national, our city and county leaders, that you'd give them wisdom to know how long we need to do this and when we can start back doing our normal and our regular things if that's even a possibility now. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to return to a new normal where we love gathering together so much that we would never, ever think about missing except under circumstances which you would lead us to. Father, we pray for the other families and members that are listed on our lit prayer list. We pray for each other. We know, Father, this is a, a hard time for some, harder than for others. And Lord, we pray that you would put people in each of our lives that we can be encouraged by and that we also might encourage along the way. And Father, we pray that, that even through this seemingly, as the world would measure it, dark time, that we would each be the light of Christ to our neighbors and friends, whether it's on the phone or online or across the yard yelling and waving. Father, we pray you would help us to be the light of Christ, to be the fruit for the kingdom. And Lord, we ask these things tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you're looking forward to Easter Sunday morning. We really wanted to be together on Easter Sunday, and it just doesn't look like that's going to be a possibility this time. But God knows, and God has it all planned out. I think God has ordained this time for us to be do, able to do something different, for us to be pruned a little bit in what we think and how we behave so that we can be more fruitful. So be in prayer. Invite somebody to be online at the same time you are. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can click the watch party and click a watch party and invite folks to join you that way. Look for ways to be creative to share the love of Christ this week, and God bless you. Have a great evening. We'll talk again soon.